hello again. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. You should have gone for the head. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. I've been Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to... I don't feel so good. We're back. Hello, everybody. Guten Abend. How's everybody doing tonight? So adorable. Hello, my love. Nori Kitty, how are you doing tonight? Look, we have the Forbidden City. Also, also look. We'll talk more about this in just a minute. But how is everyone doing tonight? Woo, why did that work? Probe? That was weird. Try it again. Try it again. I dare you. Try it again. Do it. Do it. Twisties, how are you doing tonight? Whisper Walker, good to see you as well. Uh, so unfortunately, due to COVID issues, the Moonlight Focuser aren't doing non-motorized, but it's good to keep in mind. Oh, these are all for, for just motorized. Boy. Hey, does the background music sound loud to anybody? Or is it just me? I think it's just me. It's just me. My That volume was up too high. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, welcome everybody. Hopefully everybody's having a good weekend. Wait, is, is this Saturday? Is this today Saturday? It is Saturday. Are you doing well? Cloudy skies for what looks like a week. Oh no. Oh dang. Sounds good on your end. Oh yeah, excellent. Okay, then it was just me fiddling with, with buttons earlier. I think everything is working. Uh, the ATST seems to work. I don't know about the probe droid, and well, everything seems to be good. So, Ralph Manor builds. Good evening to you as well. Happy effing Saturday. <laughs> What's up, Samsung? Andy, good evening. How are you doing today? Welcome. Good to see you. Lights work. Good. Good. Good to know. <laughs> All right, Nori, have a good night. Have a good sleep. Get, get some early rest, yes? Hopefully all is well with everyone on this Saturday. It is... Well, apologies for starting a little later, but you know what? We're going to get into something different tonight because uh, last night I wasn't too pleased overall with how the images were turning out. I had attempted to make the telescope look have, have the mirrors better aligned because it has been bumped around quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, comparing it against how the stars look in this image versus the, the previous night, it didn't have the round stars, as round of stars as I was hoping. So everyone had like this weird little tail so we're going to be utilizing tonight um, and just basically kind of running through this again. I am I an expert on this on this device? No, but this is the Ocal electronic collimator. I'm going to hook it up. We're going to see how it all works. Um, I'll have to fix up where the telescope is pointing a little bit. So it's pointing towards a white wall and um, at the sacrifice of a studio light. But that's fine. I, I don't mind about, about doing that. Are you doing good? You raised two thousand two thousand dollars for the Ukraine for Ukraine today. Excellent. Well, congratulations on the efforts, Andy. Excellent work. Good to see you. Thank you for for the efforts put into that. So what we're going to be doing is 
So this this is the big telescope. As a comparison to my head. This is what we use to image the night sky. It's really not that tiny. It is it is a fair sized scope. <clears throat> And yes, it is. Um, this is where the primary mirror sits, and up front is the secondary mirror. Once I get the front cover taken off, we'll uh, give a little bit more of a tour of the telescope so you can see what it is we're, we utilize uh, week in and week out. And just what I was kind of going on about what we're thinking about changing things up. Do we get a telescope that is commensurate size and a different configuration? Or are we going to be... Well, not or. We are going to make sure this is ready to, to be imaging once again. Um, depending on how things go, I may switch the telescope. I may switch the scope we're using for our refractor telescope while I'm making sure this is... Uh, this is good. But, yeah, we're definitely going to be hooking everything up and just making sure that... Uh, we can see what has gone wrong and I'm very confident that it is just the alignment and we can do better. And even if we can try a few little, little bits here and there, I think the one thing that we, that could be utilized would be a collimation ring, which is another little piece of, of, uh, of equipment that sits just in between the, the controller for the primary mirror, as well as making sure that this whole focuser itself, is going to be in the right position. So earlier, uh, Twisties, you are mentioning a Moonlight Focuser. So what do we have our options with? What are we doing to the OTA tonight? We're going to try to, f well, at least get it back into better collimation than we had last night. Because the way how, the way, the way the draw tube changed, it was, it used to sit like when I had the, the camera out, it would sit at, um, at about this distance. And then when I had to get focused last night, we were in like this. Like I had to move the tube in considerably to, to get focus again. Right, if you want the most badass focuser on the market, get a Moonlight Nightcrawler. All right, we're on the Moonlight. page right now but any uh third rock any su any surprise clear skies for you tonight <laughs> uh the price them just hurts oh you, you <laughs> i mean let's get these these are free who doesn't want some free for moonlight Am I going to see what's inside? If I always wanted to see what's inside. Yeah, we'll be taking all I'll, uh, I'll be taking pieces of this off and you guys can take a look down the uh, down the tube. Look at my tube. Okay, where is the uh... Kitty scrubs across the table, sticks Newton in cups of glasses. No, nope. I've put him in a different spot. How did you find them, Alex? How did you find? No, it's refractor. We want um... in Digi Star Watcher. How you doing? Good to see you this evening. Uh, well, tonight, this, uh, unfortunately, the skies are not quite in our favor. Uh, the forecast has some high-level clouds, which is just creating a thin enough haze above the well above my land above, above my property um so it's not gonna be uh, uh it possible tonight also the fact is that we have brought the telescope in the house and we're gonna be seeing if we can get things fixed up but good to see you in here i uh, know they they say rain tonight and a single hour of clear oof. <laughs> 
either the 2.5 or 2.5. Actually, the only one they have on here are the... Um, Oh, hello, little cute girl. How you doing? Ah, oh, you're clear outside map in Discord. All right. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. All right, so you're saying the... It was from the Moon Knight Nightcrawler. So is this the, the Nightcrawler? There's a lot. There's a holy potatoes. Oh my goodness. But how are you doing tonight, little cute girl? How is your How is your weekend been going? Ah, oh, these are just different adapters, okay. Welcome guest, yes. All right, so we're looking at the products. I Spock had an appointment today, so he's just chilling. Aww. How's he feeling? We love Spock the Pup. If you haven't checked out Little Cute Girl or Nova Charter, you're missing out on one of the most adorable, adorable puppies on Twitch. Alright, lots of many, many, many things to to consider. So what I I would just need a, this the two inch format folks, because that's what everything is based off of. So are they about are they about two hundred and forty five US for the for the focuser? But I'd still need to get a corrector plate. Or not a corrector plate, a um was a collimation ring. To kind of probably get the uh, the best look on here. What's up, CJ? So tonight we're using, uh, what we're going to be utilizing tonight is the... Um, is well given I guess a live tour now of how the Ocal electronic collimator works and it has now reached a high level of development and is being successfully used in the operation of, of uh, non of no vert dang it mucked it up right away <laughs> now, moreover whenever a fluorescent score motion is required it may also be employed in conjunction with the dawn replication dig dingle arm to reduce sinusoidal replen re 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 for a number of years now work has been proceeding in order to bring perfection to the crudely conceived idea of a transmission that would have not only supplied an inverse reactive that's everything you need to know about the ocal electronic call the tomato Every style will be hey it's not friday anymore why is it Friday? Even the energy of that suit is sapped away over time by the expansion of the universe, leaving everything just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. What's he doing here? A TGIF, am I right? 
if any way, shape, or form, it's Friday somewhere, or maybe you're looking forward to the next Friday. All right, read the, the yellow, yellow words. Read the yellow words, don't eat the yellow snow. This one here? Oh my goodness, this is a beast. Uh, Moonlight is not able to make and ship manual versions of our focusers due to severe supply chain issues. Only motorized versions are available to ship at this time. We are forced to phase out all manual versions and are removing them from our web page as, as the last of each model are sold. The severe semiconductor and electronic component shortages may also start affecting our automated motorized models as well as by the end of the year. We are seeing delays up to 50 weeks for some components. Uh, these issues can't last forever, and I hope 2022 will be better. Let's all hang in there and, and see if the supply chain issues get resolved soon. Sincerely, lovingly, gently, Ron Newman. All right, so maybe, I mean, there's got to be somebody who is parting with one of their Moonlight focusers, right? Like, looking on, check the uh, the used the used and, uh, and, and loved pages. we're going to be um, attempting to make sure this works. So what I need to do actually is install, is get the, um, is get the Ocal fixed up and online. When that needs to, well, the one thing I was talking about yesterday is that you need to insert your correct calibration numbers for the focuser. And that is these numbers over there and as such. So we will get those punched in because every unit is unique. My serial number is 1569. Nice. And we'll get that added into the into our focuser file. Nope. Enable editing. Yes, let's just do that. American Chris Hansen, how you doing? Keeping track of this account. Well, keep 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 it keep it on track. Keep it in your mind. How you doing tonight? Thank you very much for the follow. We're doing a little bit of a little bit, a little departure from the norm. Still, still telescopes, but we are going to be utilizing the. The Ocal Electronic Automatic Focus Collimator. Sorry, not Focuser. All right, that seems to be in order. So let's get this fired up. Wherever my file has gone. No hardware detected. Please check the connection status and reopen the application. Also, we got to plug everything in. I got to plug everything in. All right, we're going to plug everything in. Now, I did notice on some of the videos they did add the... Um, they added the uh, one of the, the rings, but I don't use... My focus doesn't require the extra ring. Because I can't achieve focus without it. I don't know if I should do the collimation with that extra ring in here so I got enough space to kind of... Hmm. Uh, you're okay? Well, hey, good to, good to hear, Chris. Hopefully your weekend has been going well. Greetings, Earthlings. Greetings, Nerduino. How are you doing? Good to see you. All right, let's get some things out of the way. And we're going to f get this fitted because like I, like I was saying last night, um, things didn't go the way how they, how, how things were planned. I uh, hate collimating. Luckily you had to, you haven't had to collimate your SCT since you replaced the number one Phillips head screwdriver with Allen heads instead of those pesky number one strip away. 
Yeah, it's, um, well, here's what we're using tonight. We got these Allen keys right here. I'm doing great. I don't like the scope indoors. What happened? Well, I was set last night's images. I wasn't happy with it, and I'm confident I did not properly get the get the scope collimated. So we are going to we're going to run a little bit of this live and see how it works. See if there's a way that we can uh, we can make this do exactly what we want it to do, and maybe with just a little bit more a little more patience, perhaps we can be a little more we can be successful. So before I get the, um, let's bring that all the way in for right now. Before I get the camera hooked up, let me show you guys down the, uh, for those who are not too familiar with how this whole thing works. I'll let you look down the, the barrel of the telescope. Uh, Allen screws are way better for minor adjustments. You want to strip the head out like Phillips head. All right. So. Now, when I'm always talking about what is the telescope comprised of, how does this thing work? Um, as you can see, down the back is our large primary mirror. That's where all the light is gathered. The secondary mirror sits on just the other side of this whole unit and it beams all the information back toward where the camera sits we saw on the back. And that's it. That's all that comprises of the elements within this telescope. Oh, we got Starlight Instruments. All right, let's have a look on that. Uh, you wouldn't even do bobs and knobs because they don't hold collimation. So do they replace like the whole thing. Like bobs and knobs don't just sit and like um, attach to the the screws that are already within the scope, right? I do not have an electronic focuser. I do not, at least not yet. Luck, Lori. <laughs> no, I just need. I just need to take flats. That's all. <laughs> that's the one thing about the, the the when the mirrors get all dirty. I mean, you know they can. For the most part, everything, um, like, on, it doesn't, somebody has shown a picture of their mirror from a Dobsonian, and it looked absolutely gross. They cleaned it up, it was pristine, it was beautiful, and they said there was no discernible difference in the performance of the telescope. Now you gotta remove the screws and replace each one of them with the bob top one at a time, and then recollimate. Ugh, my goodness. Luck, Lori. Welcome in. Glad to have you in here today. So this is the telescope that we use. This is our eight-inch Richie Kretchen scope, and yeah, we're gonna make sure, we're gonna see just how well we can fix the mirrors in here. Because my goodness, I really mucked it up. I hook up to the focuser to a plate solver and get nice autofocus and then clean them as an absolute last resort. Yeah, I have realized that um, even as dirty as things look, it's just better to just the light's still going to get through. You know, it's the um, just because we can see how dirty things are. The camera essentially almost ignores so much of what's on there unless it is uh, completely blocking it like um, Usually bits of mud or bird poop or something like that. Six hundred and forty-five for this feather feather touch. Really. Something to keep in mind. I'll leave, I'm going to leave these links open. Oh, Nina has that set in there, do they? I really got to get that set up. I really got to get uh, settled in with Nina. All right, let's also get the... Um, 
get our camera hooked up to the back, because that's what a little bit of tonight is going to be. Uh, your goal is to call yourself an amateur astronomer and basically just click a button at the start of the night and let it all run out automatically. No, that sounds great. <laughs> And then you have other projects that you can fiddle around with. Uh, and you got a new new toy. It's a water bottle with an app that, that tells you how much water you have to drink and reminds you to drink water. Well, interesting. I have a channel point redeemed for that. That's actually what professional astronomers do. Uh, literally, when we got the uh, when we got the time, we would send out observing scripts to the observatory, and the operators would make our observations for us, and then let the let the tech do its thing, right? I guess also I should take this opportunity to um, clean things up as well, just to well, not right now, not this very moment, but we'll be aiming to kind of clean up the rig. Water, 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 this, the water, 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 water. <clears throat> Andy, thank you very much for the hydrate. <laughs> We'd probably have run it into the, onto the dome or something. No, don't, 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 don't crash this into the, into the dome. So we showed you guys last night what this um... that'd be really funny if the program doesn't work on the PC so this is the camera that's it just this little little thing here is what uh, connects it into the into the scope oh what did I hit oh wrong button So we'll oh, bestia. Okay. Bestia, thank you very much for the lurk. Hope you're doing well. Uh, where does that go on to? This part. So this sits in here. Now, obviously, this the draw tube is like is way too big. This is. Um, bit of a hot dog down a hallway so you need to add an adapter which does come with the um, with the RC scope so just fix try to do kind of things left-handed with this camera so obviously the big thing speaking of big things wit wit Getting the beard, sir. You're going to be lurking and moving furniture right now. Well, lift with your knees, not with your back. Or lift with your legs. But hopefully you're doing well this weekend. Take care. Uh, you have a, We're on the topic of snakes and giant wieners. <clears throat> All right, how's, how is your rattlesnake? Is it still there? Have you named it? Does it owe you rent? Uh, you'll be back in a bit. No worries, Third Rock. We're, we are probably going to be here for quite a while tonight. Uh, at least until 11.45. Ant, how you doing? Good day, sir. Carlitos, how's it going? And yes, there was a partial solar eclipse. Uh, I did, who did I see? Someone on, on, on the Twitter did share an image. Yeah, Ant, how you doing today? Good to see you. Uh, it was still, the rattlesnake was still there this morning, hiding under a branch. Uh, you moved, assuming it had gone on its merry way. That's it, it's now a permanent resident. It's not going to leave you. Couldn't bring yourself to kill it, so you had service come in and relocate and buy 400 bucks. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, kudos for not killing a rattlesnake in Arduino. Hope you can keep it well, Ant. Good to see you. 
How have uh, how's your weekend? Been? How's your week gone? Uh, what's happening at eleven forty-five p.m.? I just need to make sure that I remember to place an order on uh, on a super top secret website that rhymes with ego. And plus, because by at that point, I'm going to be we'll be back at ten in the morning. I want to try to keep some time in between the streams to recharge. Uh, does it rhyme with corn hub? No, we have all the vegetables we need. Actually, we, um, we we grow peppers more than corn. Um, ego, yeah, I'll make you ego. I'll make you ego waffles. <laughs> Abercalina, hello. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm going to make you hungry. I'm doing a little work and lurk. No worries. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate the lurks. All right. So let's get this just attached enough that we could probably still, still pull it out. But obviously, I'm not turning this thing upside down. So we just want to make sure that nobody is... Nobody's going anywhere. Uh, he or maybe she is an important part of our local ecosystem, and it's like semi uh, size. Hello, P. Burks. Okay. Appreciate the lurk, P. Burks. All right, everybody who is lurking in the beer, there is coffee and tea in the back, and we have now Scotch guard to the sofa, so play nice. Uh, yes, we did get the order for the muffins. Uh, bagels are, well, bagels are in the morning. This is just something you're just chilling out with a nice, a nice cup of tea and some light desserts. But we will be back tomorrow morning. Ah! Oh, okay. <laughs> Libder, hello. What's up with the peppers? What is up with the peppers? That's a very good question. How are you doing tonight? Uh, you should have gone for the head. Well, I can't answer that question at the moment, but maybe somebody in chat can help you out. Hopefully. Oh, boy. Telescope still isn't collimated. Oh my goodness. Three for... Th why? It's why it, what has happened? This is no longer 50-50. This is going to throw Gandalf's... Stats way off. So what is up with the peppers? We have a... Well, usually it's some ghost peppers, but the ones that were on sale that were available were kind of rotten, so I didn't buy them. So we have some habaneros. But every time this little bar reaches zero, influenced by bits and subs, we do eat one of these peppers. I have them on standby at all times. Every 50-bit increment. Holy potatoes. Every 50-bit increment. We will have a cheese. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. And... Halther! Oh my. <laughs> oh my goodness. Halther, thank you very much for the tier two sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and burning my retinas with a tiny little Nova. Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you, Andy Spike for appreciation. And thank you very much for the 300 bits. Um, well, and that usually means we drop some, 
some of our... Let me get this bag open properly. Who opened this bag? Who would do such... So? Oh, my God. I need a container for these. So we have our, our ghost pepper. Nuts. Oh, shh. Well. <sighs> this is a Crap on a cracker. Control. Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth's team is on station here in the Mission Operations Control Room, ready to assume the control of this flight at Tower Clearance. Manuel, the Libner. Is it Libner or Leibner? Oh, guys, thank you very much for the 300 bits and the 100 bits and the. The pilot sat in launch control. We're just oh, at the six minute mark in the count. T minus 25 minutes, 53 seconds <clears throat> in counting. Still proceeding very satisfactorily. At this time, Oh, that's an Arduino. <laughs> oh, they're very cool. Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> All right. For the 100 bits. i clean that up now. Each one of these structures is capable of 100 Thank you. Plus, there are 16 of them located in four quadrants around the service quadrant. Both pronunciations are fine. Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for it. Keep it up, I trade tonight. Alright, I guess my nuts are going all over the place. Um. 100 bit increments, we're doing these. We're eating some of these. Because I just. I've made a mess with my nuts. <laughs> but thank you very much. Rexy, how you doing? Thank you. Thank you for joining in tonight. Can we get a shot for Rexy as a dinosaur? Hmm. Rough Rider, how are you doing? Yeah, we are trying out the, um... I'll tell you more about the story when we come back. Uh, when, we're, when the hype train finishes, there are some things that happened with the collimator that need to be addressed. The three pilots were joined by two of their colleagues at breakfast. Uh, yep, yeah, I made a mess with my nuts, so I'm eating the ghost pepper chips right now. As recompense for our... for our bits. The astronauts departed from their two quarters after checking out their seats. They departed from the two quarters at 6.27. And from right. Miles so we are going to be using the the collimator tonight and see if we can fix things up that I mucked up yesterday. Um, are you most welcome? Fortune ask. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're now less than 16 minutes away from the planned liftoff of the Apollo Saturn Launch Control. Fortune ask. How are you doing? Vehicle. All still going well with the countdown. Thank you very much for the for the hundred bits. The astronauts aboard the spacecraft have had a little chance to get the nuts in a better. So at least they have been uh, busy with procedures with the spacecraft test conductor. In the meantime, I'm going to be careful with my nuts. But thank you. There's a few of the ghost pepper peanuts for the bits. For the bits. How it faces flight. Once we get down to the three minute and ten second mark in the countdown, we'll go on an automatic... I love your wiggling dinosaur, Rex. You're so freaking cute. As far as the launch vehicle is concerned, all assets from here on down will be automatic. Go check out Rexy. The ground master computer. Go to Lego Builds. This will lead up to the 8.9 minutes of the countdown. Thank goodness, a wonderful place to hang out in. The ignition sequence will begin in the five engines of the first phase of the S1C phase of the Saturn V. But thank you all very much for completing level one up to a, a level two hype train. Greatly appreciated. The um, I have to clean some things up. I got nuts everywhere. <clears throat> but thank you very much for for bringing the spice and bringing everything nice, like much like all of you. And yes, at the uh, at the completion of the of the hype train, we'll get back to collimating the telescope. This is a I'll show you my I'll show you my telescope. It's um, it's rather large, so I'm gonna stand back. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how big this thing is gonna get. But 
but this is what we use. This is what we use to image the night sky. Um, it is eight inches in diameter. It is a little bit lighter weight than your than a regular tube. This is the carbon fiber version. But this is what we utilize. This shares the images of space. <laughs> and we need to align we need to make sure that this mirror up in the back, down in the back, and this mirror up in the front. At the two second mark, we'll get uh, are well aligned. And a that Otherwise, are running, and at the zero things mark, may not work out time, too well, as illustrated from last signal, night. The signal that Security, says what's up? How are you? How are you doing? We then and that's my mirror here, yes. I'm contemplating on taking it off and trying it again. <laughs> uh, 200 millimeters of diameter, roughly 1600 in focal length on a good day. That's true. But yes, this is our... This is my telescope. I like it a lot. Which is why I don't want to give up on this. We're gonna make it right. It's going to work. I'm uh, not 16. No, when it's cold, it's at about maybe 980. That was shrinkage! It shrinks? It shrinks like a frightened turtle. But the native focal length of this telescope is 1600 mi millimeters. Uh, perfect segue to, uh, to a Rick roll. <laughs> but how are you doing tonight, security? Can we also get a shout out for Security Live? Well, I do this for Nerduino. You want to check out some. We have some 7.6 million pounds of thrust pushing the vehicle upward. We will learn more about weighs, uh, the inner workings of NASA and a half million more space news. Check out Nerd Week. You want to see minutes, what 30 seconds some and awesome counting. things you can do with 3D printing control. and other sorts of uh, technology and try to hack and win and get some Bitcoin. Go check out Security Live. So I appreciate you all joining in tonight. With 40 seconds to go on the hype train, I thank you so much for kicking this one off this evening and bringing the spice, bringing the spice with the nuts and the chips and and just just totally ripping up my gastrointestinal tract. Oh boy! Thank you, Blackbeard. Thank you very much for the. How much missing for level three? Um, quite a bit. It was right at the beginning, but hey, I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for the 200 bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Greatly appreciated. All right, that is a couple of more. My goodness, I just absolutely destroyed this bag. I don't get it, but I do get it. All right. Uh, Le Leibner for the 200 bits. A couple of bonus nuts in here. I right, just refreshed Twitch. When a hype train occurs, many things do turn off. Everything should be, should be coming back. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much for the... For kicking off a hype train. And for and Alpha. Alpha Ant X. Did we get a show for, for Ant? I'm gonna check out some awesome gameplay within. Is it Call of Duty? It's Call of Duty. Live thank you very much for the 200 bits. Uh does the hype emote disappear when the hype train goes away? Um the my, my hype emote? No. But some of the, just the channel points and certain, some of the commands do turn off. Lightbeer, thank you again for the, for the 300 bits and the 100 bits. Nerduino, thank you so much for the, for the 100 bitties. And Portugask, 
Thank you so much for the 100 bits. On to the spike of appreciation for you all. <clears throat> it burns, and I need to clean this out. Oh my gosh. Holy you potatoes. We don't want spicy nut powder in our... in our telescope equipment. But seriously, this bag fell apart like crazy. That's the worst plastic bag I've ever seen. All right, bonus nut. Hoogan, how you doing? Good to see you tonight. We are going to be a... We're gonna see if we can get this telescope fixed up a little bit because my goodness, I I muck things up royally. But how's it going? Good to see. Oh, you've been keeping well. Hope you are your weekend has been going nice. Pardon me. Yeah, I'm doing great. Had such a, a fun day on Twitter. On Twitter blowing up a, a fellow streamer. Excellent. Fantastic. Can we also get a shout out for Hugin for Hugin one two nine one two nine? Do the screaming as well. Yes, on the You're getting close to affiliate, aren't you? We need to we need to make that we need to make that a uh, a reality. Let's hopefully that all works out for you. Oh my goodness. Okay. I need to get a container for these nuts. I'm uh, not... Uh, for the, these nuts. The bag is like ripped all over the place. Three, three viewers away. All right, excellent. We will, I'll be sure to, next time you are live, Hugan, I will be sure to leave a lurk. I should be joined in as well and uh, help contribute to your path to affiliate. It can all, it's everybody's path. Everyone's journey is going to be different. And, uh, you know, and if this is something that people love to do and they want to be able to make a fair go of it, then you know what? It's, uh, you, you, it's not always going to be easy. There are ups and downs with every stream. Last night for me, that was a bit of a, that was a little down because things were not working out the way it should have. I adjusted things on the telescope and it didn't look the way how it used to. Everything just was a little, a little fuzzier, a little dimmer, a little bit, a little more blurry, no matter how well I focus things. So what we're doing tonight is attempting to make it right. Uh, it's well easy. You did in five days with the tin of beans. There we go. That's, that is the secret to streaming. Beans. All the beans. You hear people saying this one's for all the marbles. No, this one's for all the beans. That's so interesting how everyone gets hung up on a, a different piece of the affiliate thing. You know, some days it, it just, uh, I gotta say, it's it, it's it's tough. It can be, uh, and again, I know people say you don't, don't worry about numbers and, and things like that. And no, it's like in, in a sense, you know, who, whoever is here, you're here, you have my attention. Unless I, like, totally somehow forget you. That's pretty much impossible, CJ. Um, uh, just beans in a tin. I once put the beans on an oil burner. Ooh, controversial. Okay, so we gotta get this thing hooked up to the computer. Let's see, as long as nothing blows up, uh, I believe we should be all right. Ah, uh, you must lurk for a while, no worries. Get in the beard. Okay. Just let me know if you're gonna bring snakes into the beard. So I was reading something about how you can get the, um, how this can work with the mobile phone because it can plug into your mobile phone. So you don't need it to be in a computer. 
There we go, got the USB connector right on the second try. Did you know that USB ports sit in a superposition? That no matter which direction you put them in, it's never going to be right? Let's see what happens here. All right, so far, so good, setting up a document. I also had a conversation with Danny from Paleontologizing about fossils and colonization. Just in terms of what, what has been discovered where and how we can determine who has done what. I believe it was also uh, Third Rock Astronomy had posted a link on um, astronomy uh, impacting... Uh, was it uh, migration patterns or just evolution of uh, of humans? I have to find that uh, that link next time he's back up. I can pull up his <laughs> his chat history and find out. Okay, let's see if we can get the uh, our software started. Okay, so far so good. So when you first start up the software, pretty much all you're going to see. Now, I don't have a window set up for it because it doesn't really have like a dedicated window. Uh, actually, I guess I could probably minimize some of these windows for the moment. Let's just minimize that can close. This can close as well. We got that information. No, nope, don't save that. You can minimize, as can you, and so can you. How about you too? There we go. Um, all right, so it starts off with just this. I'm going to turn on the camera. Camera is over here. Now, this is the only light that we can see at the moment because that is the only light that is, and you can see it's on. You can see my hand. Uh, basically, all countries claim they own fossils that were discovered in, in countries they were, uh, they once colonized, and now the countries they want them back, and some museums are trying to deny them. What's that? Basically, how countries claim they own fossils that were discovered in countries they once colonized, and now the countries want them back, and some museums are trying to deny them. Oh, okay, so something. I gotcha. I'm going to get this uh, open as wide as we can so we can still see things. Camera settings. Let's do this. So we can adjust things so we can, uh, on the camera so we can start to see down. I think I may have to turn up some of the lights. Let's see if that might help. All right. At the detriment of... Um, of how, thing, how bright things get in here. I do remember clear plastic in the tooth in the noughties. Clear plastic. And crystal Pepsi? So what we want to see is... Some more detail. Let's turn up the exposure. So you want to be able to... Um, there needs to be this ring of light, right, that we want to be able to see in the RC scope. Uh-oh. There we go.
Wow, this is you running like. Why is the frame rate like dying on this? That kind of looks like HAL 9000. I can't do that, Dave. How you doing, sub network? So what we're doing today is we are, we have our electronic collimator attached and I'm attempting, I am attempting, trying a great attempt. See if we can fix up what I, what I blundered the other day. Yeah, this is like running ridiculously slow. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. It should not be running this slow. Like it ran quicker on my laptop, which is like really weird. I meant uh, CD players and TVs. Oh, right, when you had like the, the clear Mac and everything, like the telephone was clear. Everybody liked to see what was inside. I guess that's where um, you get some of the, the PC towers that are, you can see right into it and look at all the, all the inner functions. All right, I may turn another light. Actually, what if we turn this one brighter? That helps things out. Alright, I may be a little washed out tonight, but that is in an effort. Let me make sure that this is uh, is going to work. Alright, so I'm looking at this right now. So it's this outer ring. This outer ring here is a little, this is a little thicker than that. So we want to be able to make sure that that is, uh, uh, better be washed out than washed up. There we go. You know what? This just, this is my, I call this my, I call this my future light. Uh, is it true that if you eat enough ghost peppers, you can see your entire life flash before your eyes and every bad choice that had led me to that moment? Um, that has happened to me on one occasion, and I still did it anyway. All right, so let's see how we're going to fix some of this. So even if, if it's off by this much, I mean, that's got to be part and parcel to what my problems are. I just never, I didn't dial it in as well as I should have. I bet <laughs> that thing's that makes things seem. Like <coughs> oh my goodness! The ghost peppers are relentless. <clears throat> Gillian Stone, what's going on, Gillian? How you doing? Good to see you tonight. Uh, doing all right, actually about to head out to work. Well, no worries, things are dropping in, appreciate it. Hopefully you have a, uh, have a good, have a good time at work as best of time as possible. Uh, so yes, we're looking at the inside of the telescope at the moment. We're seeing this is our... The, you can get all the, the information coming from the mirrors. All right, get the beard. A little warm in here tonight. Uh, what program service do you use for all your effects? I use a combination of a program called Leoran Board which helps control things. Streamer bot to run the run commands and control things. And some items, some elements are either some YouTube green screens that were are just kind of picked up or <coughs> certain animations that I've created myself. So it's a, a large combination of a whole bunch of different <coughs> things. 
<clears throat> you fucking knew it. Water, 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 this, the water, 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 water. Thank you, Hugh. Appreciate it. So I had to move a few By things the tonight. Power of Grayskull, <clears throat> I had the mustache. <laughs> oh goodness! Bring it on! How are you doing tonight? Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? We are we are utilizing this Ocal automatic. No, it's an, I keep saying automatic. There's no automated automation to it. We are utilizing this program to try to attempt and improve the collimation on our telescope. Because it wasn't as as well collimated as I thought. Because look, you can see this ring is wider than this one. Oh boy. So we're going to attempt to make it right. <laughs> oh, peas and rice. All right, um, there's there, there's a flaw in my plans here. Every time some light lights occur, I'm a little washed out tonight. But hey, I uh, hope to see some wonderful stars. Clouds cleared up. Werewolf, how you doing? What a, a wonderful Valprugenschnacht. What's that? Aside from me totally butchering the language. That's not the button I wanted. I wanted to utilize another button. This button. For all the clouds that we have out there tonight. So last night, we did some imaging, and things weren't as well as I hoped they would be. Now, one thing that was kind of cool was that we did image a comet last night. This was comet C. C2, so C, yes, C2017, K2 pan stars. And we were watching it track across the sky. I pressed all the buttons, even the big red one. Uh oh. I think I need to get like a, I need a dedicated light. <laughs> Will any of the phones work? Do I have any, anybody? Any, uh, Bueller? Bueller. All right, what about you? Is your flashlight going to work? Is that going to help? What if I do this? No. Holy oh potato. Goodness, the, the frame rate on this thing is horrible. Look at this. Like, when I was looking at it before... It was, um, everything was like way better. All right, do I have another phone stand? Something I could fix this to? No. No, that's not going to work. Uh, it's the bright before the 1st of May when the witches write to, to when the witches, witches write to the Broken, a mountain where they have a festivity in Germany. Oh. Very cool. How are your skies, Werewolf? Do you have um, you have better forecasts than, than, than we do at the moment? Yeah, like, yeah. This is like a like PS Five. My goodness, no, we don't want that. I mean, this got to be. Can I resolution thirty four by two forty eight? Yeah, that's uh, that's what we need. Hmm. Need a better light source. Uh, all cloudy. Uh, next clear sky is Monday evening, unfortunately. Ooh. I don't think ours is looking any... Nothing until probably maybe Friday. Thursday, Friday. Um, next week, we may have some clear skies. But until then, we, uh, we have some time to be able to see if we can get this telescope all um, fixed up. Otherwise...
So this outer ring we're seeing. Oh man, if this is like really slow. Okay, then we just gotta take it slow. Is I wanna make sure that, that is all. Nice and even. I need to try M51 again, so Friday Friday should also be clear. Excellent. How much time have you acquired on M51? Okay, so if we were to impact this, so we are going to be So to fix up everything, all these little these little grub screws, there's three there's three pairs around here that will impact the um, the primary mirror. So let's see about wiggling this one a bit. See if that might. Uh... I see you got the the, the live view from Mars rover. Right, let's see. We just need to turn this a little bit at a time. That seems to be the direction we want to go. That does look a little more even. All right, I'm going to say that that actually might be that little bit of a change. Maybe what we need. I've been printed a flat panel uh, right now in the dark cover for the mirrors. For the mirror side of the scope. Ooh, excellent. How's that? Uh... See, I was thinking, I need a, I don't, well, I would like to get a flat panel. I think that is uh, going to be fairly, fairly important in terms of just being able to, um... actually, does that look even? Does that look nice and... That, that that circle around there does look a lot better already. So that is that that's kind of like step one. Make sure that that is where we want it. A flat panel was no problem. Printer has a forty by forty centimeter bed. So, oh, excellent. See, we've all have. Uh, oh, Werewolf, are you familiar with um, with Maker Deck? I'm just pointing everybody who does uh, printing, does three D printing over there. Because if you do, if you do three D printing, and you like to share what you what you do, uh, lit energy A two LED light box, uh, light table 14, 14 by nine by twenty one point eight. Hmm. Seems all right. That's what you got to use as a flat panel. And can still use a white shirt. Uh, chatting about the, the Mars rover, it's expanding service life till September. I oh, was at the uh, the Perseverance. Over the helicopter. How? What's the latest on that? Uh, it's pretty diffuse out of the box, though. I've seen some people have had some good luck with that. All right. Um, I know. I think we can probably do a little, a little better. I think I can. Beetle Rock, how you doing? <laughs> Howdy, Aster, and his lovely goat. The goat is fantastic. 
Astro is doing not too bad. Um, uh, no, Maker Deck does not ring a bell. You just created something in a, in a few minutes. Infusion. Ah. Let's see, are we going in the right? That seems to be good. I right, good. Just calming down from uh, too much coffee and KSP. Oh my goodness, we are. If we can get this to a point where I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say, you know what, we're going to, we're going to leave it and um, and move on with things. We'll probably jump into KSP a little later. All right, Andy, you're going to head off. No worries. Have a good sleep. We'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll be back with our Lego stream. Uh, previous message. No, did not see. Oh, Domino's Pizza sucked. Oh, so I feel like. Nah, you know, I agree with you on that. Sometimes Domino's is great and other times I've been let down. I've been completely let down by Domino's. Uh, should you pay attention to this? You need to call me yours at some point. Um, yes and no. I mean, yes, pay attention, <laughs> but we are utilizing the Ocal electric electronic collimator. And I had what I thought was some success last night. Uh, it's it's not going too well. And right now, for some reason on my PC, and it, it really shouldn't, uh, the frame rate is balls. Like I was using it on my laptop last night and like we, like yesterday afternoon, and it was all in real time. Like, look at this frame rate. Like, I move my hand freely in front of this. And I don't know if I can... Are there any other settings in here? Low light compensation? Let's turn that on. Does that help? White balance, backlight comp. No, there's nothing about a frame rate on this. It should be. Um... Uh, so you're at karaoke until a few minutes ago. What'd you miss? Hang on a second. Hang on. What's your favorite? Well, that might be it. Oh, for Pete's sake. Ugh. That would be why. Okay, so I need a brighter, even brighter light. All right, what if we do this? Oh, I have to rearrange things in the morning. How's that any better? Let's uh, able to prop the tablet up on a on a white screen. Hmm. No, I don't even have a tablet large enough. <laughs> Kite crafter. Ooh, a monitor can work. Maybe. Oh, man. Oh, I like the way how this lighting looks at the moment. Kite Crafter, how you doing? Thank you very much for joining us tonight. How are you doing? What's What's been keeping you busy tonight? Welcome in, Raiders. Lucia the Great, welcome in. <laughs> All is well, thanks. Wonderful. Jim. Jim Fick. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Yes, welcome in. Welcome in, Raiders. Uh, my name is Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. It is it's my pleasure, as always, to share my love of astronomy with you in many ways, be it in the form of some live imaging, 
Uh, Jim FYYC for Calgary. What's going on, Jim from Calgary? I'm uh, I'm Tom. I'm YYZ. <laughs> yep. Excuse me. <laughs> Is it Lucia or Luska or Luska? I'm gonna stick with Lucia for, for the moment. SI3D, how's it going? Highly ho to you too. Good to see you. Yes, we do some live imaging. This was a this was Comet C two zero one seven K two Pan Stars. We were imaging last night. Luska, Laska. Ah, uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't listen to myself. <laughs> uh, exclamation CMD. We'll bring up some of the commands in here. Well, we were taking a look at a comet last night. Um, now I was imaging. I. Oh, hello. Oh yeah, that's right. Lurk is in here. Okay. I uh, use an external USB hub. Why do we jump back to this one? Strange. <laughs> oh, that's right. I didn't. I didn't leave it long, long enough. So we do live images of outer space. I live in central Ontario. We have very little light pollution. Uh, unfortunately, right now, it's still bright out and we have some high clouds. So unfortunately, tonight, we're definitely not going to be doing any imaging because the telescope is in for repairs. <clears throat> um, this is, we're utilizing a new tool that um, is meant to assist with collimation. This is the Ocal Electronic Collimator. And right now, we are attempting to make sure that everything is working out well. Hugh Funk can do it. Well, hello again. Yes, good. Wonderful to have you all in here. Um, what is a collimator? Well, kite crafter. Glad you asked. Also, what? Sorry. What else did you get up to today? What were you working on? What were you? Um, what was bringing you joy in the makers and crafting section tonight? So the collimator, what what the collimation is? There you go. Um, CJ will will will. <laughs> Ignore ninety nine percent. Anything after the Ocal electronic collimator? <laughs> uh, working on a three D printed miniature crane type of thing. Ooh, cool. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked. I asked earlier, have you checked out Maker Deck? It's it's a frick it's a freaking laser. Uh, you've been modeling in Blender for the past 23 hours, can't bring yourself to sleep. You want to make sure that it works, eh? It gets addictive when you're on a roll with things. Mr. Richard, how you doing? Any roar lately? I have not seen anything yet. Uh, better than a laser collimator. The what is meant to be beneficial for for this device is that it is a camera. You get a live feed down your telescope, and if you forget that you are on such a a high exposure, that you wonder why everything is is so slow. You need a brighter light in front of this, so I need to find a brighter light source. Um, Actually, I wonder if I can... I know what I can do. I hope I know what I can do. Oh, let's see. This probably... This may or may not work. Give me a second. Let's see. I don't know if we can keep it in line. Okay, that's a little better. Hang on a sec. Hmm.
No, that's got to that's still got to come down. Peas and rice. Wait, if we lift it up. All right, give me a second here. We're going to make this work. Just get this to work. Okay. This, ooh, this might be really good. This may make life a little easier. I think this is about as, uh, as close as I can get the, the light. And then this is going to be a pain in the ass when it comes to doing the, the secondary mirror. Okay. Well, this is looking a little better now. So, now that we have um, rearranged one of the lights, which I'm going to have to like, rearrange later tonight after the stream, get it back to what it once was, but I think we're, uh, we're looking pretty good. So we can dial back the exposure a, a little bit. I can crank up the lights a lot a bit so that we can get our All right, so we wanted to make sure that this ring, that this was fairly even. And now we want to make sure that we're going to have focus with the, with the mirror. How much better is this in regards to laser collimation? Because to be honest, as you know, you're just beginning, you have to, to have more professional optics. If it's just two and a half percent, perhaps you'll stay with the laser. I have yet to try out laser collimation and. I am. Wondering how well this is going to go. Just adjusting a few. Bits in here. New and I've never laser collimated. Hmm. Alright, this white, this light source needs to be a tiny bit more diffuse. Because if I'm not seeing the edges properly. Yeah, 
it's still moving all right. I mean, for the most part, everything is almost there. Like, it's... We're almost looking where we want to. Let's, uh... We just did this. A little better. I thought it was uh, standard as the tool cost of a few bucks and it's done uh, and is it done within done in a few minutes um, with this tool. Now, I did watch the um, the video from Ocal World and they had this done in like uh, in like 10 minutes. But I gotta say, I am, uh, all right, that side, that does look bigger than that. Like, there's not a whole lot of fine tuning that needs to be done. Like, I, it was, the collimation was off just um, a bit. And no, you don't have, and that's, that's also the good thing about this, is that we don't have to disassemble the telescope either. Like, it is just meant to be the, oh, Sugar lumps and weasels. I think my phone died. My phone died. All right, hang on a second. <laughs> Let me get my shoulder cam back up and running. But for now, this is our little bit of a view. Uh, on Newt's, yes, the SCTs, the laser collimator, and all the parts needed are way, way too expensive. Artificial star is cheaper. RCs are a different story. They have the laser and what I'm using. Yes, the there is the, the laser option. Uh, that I looked with um, some of the other, the, the other ways that you can laser collimate a uh, an RC scope. The price of every tool required was going to start running up into like six, like close to almost like six hundred bucks. Um, and where this one is, I'm using the Pro version, and that one is two hundred ninety nine Canadian. And the Pro version comes with the cable and the um, the USB dongle. If you want to be lazy and never collimate, buy a refractor. I, 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 that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> there is, a, I've always had the refractor on my list. But there is, um, there's this cable. This little uh, adapter that comes with it, plus the inch and a quarter, and the, um, and this M48, Luta M42, uh, uh the ghost pepper dust is not included, so I need to um, I need to clean that up. Uh, you could use a USB A to USB C, but it just comes with the USB A to A because I guess maybe some PCs they're not anticipating that people are going to be having a uh, a USB C port available. All right, see, it's the. Uh phone back and running two percent i gotta let it charge up a bit so yeah this is the the a to c it comes i mean it something depending on what phone you buy as well it may come with one of these i have a couple of these kicking around it does have the uh does indicate that it is usb usb 3.0 but also comes with the um with the pro version plus the the inch and a quarter adapter which we have uh, applied right now all right let's see if uh see this is a, it is such a small amount of movement that i don't even think there's <clears throat> just a small adjustment to the primary mirror perhaps that um that i want to make sure is right 
So we can um, we can adjust the, the ring size. Math Labs, how you doing? Thank you very much for the follow today. Crosshair is supposed to be is is supposed to mark center. Yes. So that once you're once you're done, you can make sure that like even the like this can rotate as well. To make sure that the spider veins all work up, uh, lo uh, line up. Luck, Laurie, thank you very much for the follow. We're glad to have you in here today. It's just a tiny bit. Uh, where in the night sky is a supernova you recently? Uh, I, I, OK, I observed it. We'll be clear. I did not find this one. Um, it's if you target NGC four, six, four, five, four. Sorry, NGC four, six, four, seven. That will take you to the. To the supernova, which is oh, peace and race. That was it. Which will bring you to this target. That's the gal. That's M sixty is the is the brighter galaxy the elliptical galaxy. M NGC four six four seven has the has the supernova. That's a star that has exploded in a galaxy. I've seen reports fifty six to sixty two million light years away. Math Labs, greetings humans. Nice to see somebody streaming astronomy content. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Math Labs, good to see you in here. We do have a few others who do uh, partake in in sharing astronomy as well. Third Rock Astronomy, when when they have some clear skies on the Pacific Northwest, does share views from their telescope as well. Uh, did you notice uh, already any any using uh, Starlink satellite? I have not really been bombarded by a Starlink train. Um, I'm on the list to get a Starlink, but been waiting for um, almost a year now. Very close to a year. Uh, okay, you just have the that little laser that goes into the eyepiece, and you have to move it so the laser hits the center, hits the circle in the primary mirror, and then the reflection has to be moved by the screws on the on the primary mirror, so it goes into the target laser thingy. So yeah, no, I've I've never utilized the um, I've never had a Newtonian, or I never had like the the classic Newtonian. This is the uh, the first mirror, uh, the first reflector telescope I've ever had. Uh, you live in a very dark location. You used to do astronomy presentations as part of your work. I uh, still have the big job to take camping, but you've been out of the loop for a while. Excellent math labs. We live in a Bortle three location, and we've actually had some really good uh, weather for the past few days. Uh, the next week looks a little pants, but possibly possibly Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'll have to check. What's the count? What's the? What does my report say? Um, for some clear skies. Um, Leibner! Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for utilizing your prime sub on this channel. Hundreds of thousands of other streamers you could have chosen and you Pick the stream. I appreciate it very much. On to the spike of appreciation, our pillar of happiness. The rod of love. Your name goes for all eternity. I keep all my receipts. All right, we are. Ooh, this hot pepper is getting closer and closer. This little bit right here is impacted by bits and subs. When it reaches zero, well, we have right now we have in replacement of a ghost pepper, we have a very fruity and somewhat um, majestically spicy habanero, which um, yeah, it burned, it burned, it burned once before, and if it burns again, y'all can join in. Uh, I must have been streaming for a while. You're cursing the Twitch algorithms right now for not bringing you here earlier. It can be, I mean, we've gone on before. We banged on about how hard it is to discover things on Twitch. And my kingdom 
at least for an astronomy tag. You know, not so much. We don't need we, science and technology is fine, but if we can start searching by tags and have astronomy in there, that would be fantastic. Uh, is the Nova dark now, or is there still a chance to to catch light on Monday? Still, yes. No, you'll still be able to catch light from the supernova. I looked at it last night in my uh, in the lesser view from the telescope. It's still very visible. This was a this was what do we do like maybe. 60 seconds, 30 seconds, and it's still, it outshines the nucleus. It's probably still going to be bright for another couple of weeks. So it's still going to be visible, and it's just like a short, even fi a five second exposure with our camera, we were able to, uh, to see this whole, this whole uh, supernova. So the target is, the exact galaxy is NGC 4647. And that will take you directly to that. Or if you are, depending on any, how else you may be comfortable finding things, Messier 60 is the is the larger elliptical galaxy. So I think it's uh, it, it's re it, it's the first time I saw the uh, the image come in, I was uh, pleasantly shocked. What does our forecast hold right now? Uh, okay, it's changed drastically. Although clear uh, clear outside does change fairly frequently until we're like leading up to the weather. Um, Wednesday might be a, might be a good night to do some, uh, some some imaging, and then before Thursday and Friday we're looking good, but they have like quickly switched to um, all the worst weather. Uh, spoil the secret you've been holding. You're working on getting a, P a mini PC with Windows Pro so I can uh, you can allow trusted people to remote desktop in an image from your backyard. Ooh, very cool. That's awesome. Well, I look forward to hearing a little more on that, uh, on that project there. Now, that's also a thing that I would like to do here as well. Once we, um, again, kind of going down the line, we want to have a, a dedicated observatory for... Uh, for at least one of our telescopes and have the option of letting people control the scope. But what I want to be able to figure out is how I can make sure that there are the hard limits that it's not going, someone isn't going to go say, hey, let's look at the large Magellanic cloud and then smash the scope into the, into the pier. So, uh, okay, the shoulder camera, that should be charged. Yeah, that's good. Now, I there is the, uh, you can install um, the software onto a mobile phone, but I tried it on two other devices and it didn't work. And it wasn't until I went up to the, the latest version of the Samsung Galaxy that it actually, Samsung Galaxy, that the uh, software actually worked on the phone. But how are you doing tonight, AstroStream? I still can't get EQ mod mount limits to work for you. What pro are you are you using um, Astrophotography tool or Nina? I would like to be able to get it to work. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I would like to check even with um, I don't know Third Rock if Econ Greg has mentioned it because he had the optoscope working, right? Uh, you're doing good? Excellent. Wonderful to have you in here. Also, can we get a shout out for the Astro stream? Because the more people who are on Twitch available for possible imaging the night sky and sharing their experience. You should have gone for the head. Ah, crap. Buckaroo Brogan, why would you do such a thing? Why would you do such a thing? I love you, 3,000. Well, 
What's going on, Buckaroo Brogan? Good to see you. Um, needs like an hour's cool down. Well, sometimes it's been like, I don't know. It's, it, something has changed. I'm blaming Gandalf. All right, there we go. Shoulder camera is back up and running. There we go. Uh, Twitch literally just suggested the snap to you. <laughs> oh, did they now? <laughs> hey, Gandalf, what's going on? <laughs> uh, Euphorious, how are you doing tonight? Uh, the, the snap tonight has been like 100% successful. My goodness. Buckaroo Brogan, how are you doing this evening? Uh, <laughs> please use your 1500. Oh, 1500, 1,500 channel points. 1,500 bits doesn't piss off the stream. It makes me cry. Channel points, however. Those are, those are free to utilize. Uh, that's because you, you, you hacked, hacking the stream elements. Oh my goodness. Which is incredible because I'm utilizing streamer bot. All right, what we are utilizing... Oh, hello. <laughs> we are using this collimating tool to very slowly, very gingerly... So I guess at this point, it wouldn't be the... Uh, I would need to adjust the secondary mirror. That, that's not it. Because if the primary mirror is looking um, like it's in place, we just need to shift the secondary mirror... <laughs> like down into the, or up into the right, right? Because, um, uh, well, you had to guess one. You should have known not to go with the, the cool one. It is a astronaut, <laughs> Tim Peak. Ask me a question. What's up, Lars? How you doing? Uh, for help with the EQ mod limits and then astrophotography in your Discord, so real. Uh, when he gets a send a reply. All right. We'll check that out. Lars, good to see you. Hope you've been keeping well, my friend. So this from... Wait, hold on. Tim Peaks Ask an Astronaut, page one, two, three. Has that page been claimed? I don't believe it has. It has not. All right. We got a... Uh, Yes, that, I believe, yeah, Third Rock, that is where we first met. Do you remember when we met? Okay, so that's, uh, I'm going to have to pick a different camera angle tonight. So does food taste different in space? This is a great question and one where the answer may vary depending on who you talk to. I thought some of the food did taste different in space. I think the main reason is that we don't smell the food in space as much as we do on Earth. And so much of our eating experiences relies on our sense of smell. This is partly due to the fact that there is no convection in weightlessness. Hot air does not rise and cold air does not sink. Air inside the space station is moved around by ventilation fans and much as in an airplane, this creates an artificial flow from the ceiling to the floor, taking smells away from our nose. Of course, in space, we have the perfect solution for this, eat upside down. However, astronauts sometimes suffer from reduced sense of smell regardless of the lack of convection. In weightlessness, our body fluid shifts upward into our chest and head, causing astronauts to appear puffy-faced and raising our intracranial pressure. Also, the ISS is a dusty environment to work in as particles float in the air don't sink to the ground like they do on Earth. Both an increased intracranial pressure and a higher concentration of dust can cause inflammation in the nasal cavity lining, thus resulting in a stuffy nose and subsequent reduced sense of smell. 
It's not just the lack of smell that affects our taste. Enjoying food is a multi-sensory experience, and the ISS, which is clinical, which is a clinical laboratory appearance, artificial white lighting, forced ventilation, and remoteness from planet Earth is always going to struggle to provide an atmosphere for fine dining. I always enjoyed eating in the Russian segment. They had a couple of posters around the galley table. Simple scenes of green fields, trees, and spring flowers under a blue sky. It wasn't much, but it was home, and for me that made food taste better. Thankfully, we were permitted a few condiments on board to liven up the food. We had salt and pepper <clears throat> in a liquid solution. It would be useless as grains as they would simply float away. And items such as barbecue sauce, Tabasco, and the all-important ketchup. And for that bacon sarni. In an effort to keep my salt intake low, I would often add some Tabasco to liven up otherwise bland dishes. Well, thank you very much, Lars, for the, for the redeem. This is Tim Peake's Ask an Astronaut full of questions and great insight into his time leading up to the his time is uh his mission on the international space station and where have my post-it notes gone uh oh there we go <clears throat> no we don't we want we want less poo particles that's why there's a vacuum that's why there's a vacuum in the poop bag cj i just got home for a birthday party being at uh in the early morning hours. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it makes you wonder about the chance of a cerebral hem a cerebral hemorrhage in space. Hmm, interesting. I think about that. <clears throat> but hopefully you're doing well. Lars, how is the uh how's your week been? All right, page one, two, three. Atomic Rooster. Well, hello, how you doing? Welcome in. What's that paper pointy thingy? That paper pointy thingy is our spike of appreciation, our pillar of happiness. This is where whenever any receipts are printed out from subs or bits, you are impaled on my spike for all time. Thank you very much, Lars, for the for the contribution. You're welcome. It's a it's a very interesting book, and we've been going through this uh, this book for quite a while. Uh, like Lad the Impaler, yes, but with a little more appreciation and, and consideration for for those who contribute to the stream. Is it really upside down in three dimensional space? You'd like to say no to that one. Uh, I would say the only way that they would probably be discerning what's up or down on the International Space Station is the direction for the airflow. That would be it. Other than that, no. There's no real true orientation that you could uh, experience. So, yes, we are attempting to collimate this telescope in some... Rod of love. Lars, thank you very much for the 100 bits. And on to the rod of love for you and in for for 100 bits. We will. Um, usually for every 50 bits, we'll do a ghost pepper peanut, but my bag is like ridiculously torn and it's hard to get the nuts out. So we'll go with the for 100 bits. A haunted ghost pepper chip. Cool pro Caleb. Well, we got a professional Caleb in the house tonight. How are you doing today? Right, now let's find you a. There you go. Lars, thank you very much. I get a full size chip for you. Hello, Welch Gang. That's terrible. <laughs> well, it's true though. The bag is all ripped up. Like even like my nuts fell into the 
into the box as well. I got to clean this up. This is true. I did say this. <clears throat> These are not false words. But good to see you, Wedge Gang. Hope you're keeping well. Okay, so this is this tool we're using. is meant to help adjust our mirror. And like I said, we just have to move the... Um, I feel we just need to adjust the secondary mirror a tiny, tiny bit. Um, so if I... Let's see. I uh, just at the doctor's office for a regular checkup. Well, thank you very much for joining in live from the doctor's office. It's Wench Gang. Good to have you in here. Let's see if we can see if we can dial this in a little bit. I got I got to head over this direction. Uh, the crosshair is off center, so I'm thinking if I can just move the secondary mirror, um, like down and to the left, we should be able to say that this is fairly well aligned because I, I feel like I, it was almost there last night with the with the um, while we were imaging we just want to let's uh, go 100. Let's see if we can get this. Dilios, welcome. Thank you very much for the follow. How are you doing today? So this is very, very... Very, very tiny increments. Uh, you have a plan to save the universe. Ooh, what's what, what's the grand plan? All right, right now you're using HP i5 processor, but no real graphics card worth mentioning. So the new one would be a game changer. Ah, uh, hmm. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's probably other things we can do with that uh, wench gang. Uh, thanks for the stream and chat. We will visit the stream uh, from time to time. Have a great weekend. Happy stargazing and sky watching. Bye for now. Thank you, Jim, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Like I said, we have our regular schedule, but whenever the skies are clear, we will abandon those schedules in favor of pointing the telescope to the night sky. And hopefully, um, <clears throat> hopefully, that will happen again fairly soon. <clears throat> All right, let me move some of this. Send this out of the way. All right, so for those of you who are new to the channel, I welcome you in. My name is Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. And tonight is a bit of a first doing some By the power of live Ray tech Skull, I have the adjustments mustache. to the telescope. Um, and what we like to do, <clears throat> oh, very so much so, is improve our views of the night sky whenever we can. And I feel like we're like this close to be able to um, call this telescope collimated. Uh, at least do a, a retest later on. Um, maybe some fine tuning afterwards, but hopefully uh, this is all it's going to take to bring it back into the right view. All right, we want to impact this one. Let's see. Oh, let's. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of slightly off camera for this. And we will actually open our... Oh, sorry, look things off. <laughs> You've been welcomed to the high peak of, peak of high society. God's gift to ballroom notoriety. All right, let's see. Will this... Um...
slightly. This secondary mirror does not want to move at all. Okay, that's a little more in line. Uh, they're culminating a telescope. They did it to you when you turned 50. Well, I'll tell you what, the good news is that after I finish doing it, I can still, um, I don't have to wash my hands. <laughs> Let's see, Let's see where we're at. Okay, essentially. What's up, Hanau? How are you doing? Uh, Photoshop, um, of course, to picks and, picks and say you don't know if too far, far too convoluted. I uh, don't really know where to do anything. Third Rock knows a thing or two about. Uh, about picks and sight. Hmm, that could still, a secondary mirror could still move in about. Ah, uh, careful not to blow out your wing. Imagine a giant crack appears across the screen. My goodness. Okay, now that, that can still, that could still move over a tiny bit. So it's off a, hmm. Uh, be careful, in Germany we have a saying First, secure the broken off. Well, let's say that outer ring looks fairly even maybe a touch thinner on that side
I would see now uh, l looking on the video and uh, what Ocal Optics or what Ocal World says. Um, the only other thing that's going to be that would be an impact to everything that we're doing would be um, the fact that this should have a I should be able to, to have a, a, a correction plate or a collimation ring for the uh, for the focuser because it is the it is the stock focuser and a lot of people have said that yes it needs to be adjusted you should have gone for the head ah oh, crap Not hacked. Not at all. There we go. Mild adjustments. How's it going, Lily? Uh, not hacked. Not at all, exactly. <laughs> Stares at Gandalf sterilely. Oh, look, it's the outside. Look, it's a supernova. Look, it's my other screen. By the power of Grayskull, I have the mustache. Hey, oh, oh, is this mustache? All right. Okay, here's what I'm going to say. It appears to be... I don't know, things look a, a little better than the, than the camera. Uh, perhaps, maybe, maybe moving things a slight, slightly. Uh, perhaps we need to adjust it a tiny bit more. It's kind of like I would need to maybe, uh, you can formulate a, you can make a, a uh, let's see what I'm looking for. An artificial star, right? By putting a little bit of a hole in a piece of tin foil. Source coming from that, so I could, I could possibly try to the uh, make it a, a artificial star, and then that might work to do the last little bit of uh, fiddling. But I feel like I'm looking at this, and that doesn't look like a perfect ring. That does look to be. Yeah, that doesn't look right. It yeah, it looks a little off. It looks like um, off to this side where it could come up a little bit. So we want to I want to fiddle with one one more screw. Uh, do you have baking parchment? Piece of that over the end to make diffuse the light a little bit more evenly. Uh, do I have baking parchment? Uh, possibly. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in a little closer here. I'm going to adjust this screw. Just a. Uh, Tiny bit. Just want to ever so slightly. Oh, sorry, we're not even on the not even on the right screen. Yeah, I think that may not have been it. 
I, I am not left-handed. Uh, can we zoom when Tom has constipation face? <laughs> We're like... No, trust me, there is no... There's none of that face going on at the moment. All right, move the A. Get all a little bit. Uh, as we say in Ireland, it looks fecked more chara. What is it? What? What? What, what did I just say? See, I don't want to go mucking around with the primary mirror too much. Uh, Mochara is your friend. Oh. <laughs> He's just quite literally someone's name. Fair enough. All right, where is this? Uh... Oh, dear. I'm trying to find... Trying to find a tiny little hole. I can't see it. How dare they? How dare they move things around on me? Oh, there we go. Yeah. That hole seems farther away than I thought. don't want to be moving things around too much. See, now there's the, you can see that little donut, that little circle. That's, that should be a reference point, but apparently, actually probably if I, yeah, it's probably, it probably is going to come down to the, um, I'm going to come down to adjusting this whole um, assembly, this whole part here, because this needs to be adjusted so that it fits um, in place. And I appreciate those who are jumping in, just uh, chilling out here. This is, a, like I said, a bit of a different... We have a different thing we're doing tonight. And quite frankly, last night was, uh, it, it really, it really got to me. The fact that we, I thought I had this all figured out. And it just didn't look quite right. And it's just through all these little fine adjustments. That eventually we can get this thing correct. This will work. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it will. Okay, so. That there. So I want to impact 
Let's adjust our exposure. Now, now the um, secondary looks a little off. Now, because inside, you know what, that, to me, that doesn't look, that doesn't look right. Or maybe it's just the way how the light is hitting everything in here. Like, that seems like a huge, huge gap. And so I, that leads me to believe that, no, this mirror is actually not... The primary mirror is actually not properly aligned. Or maybe some... Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm probably going to have to somehow get my hands on a collimation ring. Because this thing may be so far off. That I'm I'm doing, because how this this gap here. If I were to close it in, then this should start to sit over top of the. Um, over the camera, which would make me think of the then the primary mirror, is um, is better aligned. zoom in pretty pretty close like it, it does seem like there's just a tiny bit that if I can close that gap so I want to and we're you know it's free you know you, here is what here is why I like doing this because because we can see when things work out and things don't work out. It just doesn't look right in there. All right, that's going to move it down. Let's move it that way. I don't want to move it that way. That moves it in that direction. That's all right. The black circle that looks like a washer. That is a. Um, That is where you want <clears throat> to have some things al aligned to. So we want to be able to get the primary mirror aligned. So you can I turn this up a little bit. I am essentially going to, I want to restart.
so far that all looks that looks nice All right, we can see. That's not as. Uh, we want concentric circles, we want concentric rings in here. And that's not what we have at the moment. This one was moving it down a touch, which is a direction we were hoping to go. Okay. I better <laughs> imagine. This one. Getting so sleepy. Don't don't fight it. You know, CJ, get the rest. Get some rest. Listen to the call, my friend. Have a good sleep. We will uh Look forward to you for forward to seeing you again soon. So we'll be back tomorrow morning. We will um we'll have a fresh new build for Lego. Alright, it's starting with a little better. that all seem a little more primary marriage seems a little more even so let's let me lock all that down like I, I was saying what I truly believe at this point now is the focuser itself is tilted that it's not in the in as, in as good a position as it can be because now anything else that we do with the secondary mirror um, Dramatic. A dramatic beard. No worries, Gandalf. I appreciate the lurks. I appreciate it. Let's see. Can we...
there's always so many different things to um, to adjust. See, it's like it looks like it's almost there, but I, I really feel like in the end it's just going to be. Um, things to adjust for the, um, thing. You only did it, like you did it for the close out of the constipation phase. It, it's more like this. Thinking face, the eyebrows go up. All the way around for... Right, it's uh, it, like it looks like we have many concentric rings. Let's turn these off. Like everything is almost completely lined up. To the point where I would say I would actually like to be able to um, whatever I do in last needs that little bit more. See, the only thing I'm wondering about is. Oh, this doesn't seem to be. Is well in line. So it seems like it may be there may be too much pressure on one point than the other. Actually, no, I think I might try that. I think I might um, get a piece of aluminum foil with a tiny little pin prick. And see, no, it's not, that's, not, that's not how this camera is supposed to work. I need to have the actual camera installed. And I don't have everything connected. Oh, boy. Like, yeah, I, I feel that it is, it is like just about there. And I don't think I need to adjust the um, the primary mirror anymore. But nor do I feel like the secondary mirror is that far off. You know, it, it does need to go that way. Okay, let's tiny bit. Tiny bit. You go that way. You go. No, I don't have the, um, <clears throat> I have to get the, a Ooh, I have the other, I have the regular ASI air here.
looks almost good. That, these two little bumps that we can see right here, I feel like with my hand like this for some reason, it feels like it reminds you of the House of Frightenstein, the way how the shadows are, are looking. I just say just download the driver from, a, from ZWO. Yeah, I have like, I don't have ask, I have nothing <laughs> like that. This looks not too bad. Okay, so I'm here's what I'm what I'm, what I'm thinking now. <laughs> What's up, helmet? <laughs> we have a giant space finger. <laughs> How you doing? We are utilizing the Ocal Electronic Collimator. That is uh, this little bit of kit plugged into the back of the uh, back of the scope, and I feel like it's like almost there. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, because you know I ha everything is disconnected everywhere right now. At, at like six thirty, and I think about like maybe even quarter to seven, I put the notification on Discord about what's happening and it that was me saying just absolutely we are taking this apart we're bringing it downstairs you guys are going to see exactly what i'm doing and whether or not we're going to have some success so this is um it's looking not too bad but i i just i just feel like the the primary mirror isn't in the right spot. Like, I just feel like this, this gap is way too wide. And then moving, moving it over. And by no means am I attempting to be some kind of authority on this, uh, this piece of equipment. It is quite literally trying to use it. Me trying to, uh, to make my way through the uh, equipment. Yeah, it could have shifted in shipping from you. It's, that's just it. And I feel like if we move it over, like this is pretty much in line almost where, where things should be. Uh, it's a it's it's not so much the distance for the mirrors, it's the alignment of the mirrors. So here's your prime here's your primary mirror. And that's the secondary mirror. That they need to be both in alignment versus anything that may have shifted up or down. You know, and they need to be looking at each other. Now, I think reading on the on, with Ocal. Now I see they got this with their Newtonian. Okay, adjust three collimation screws to make the blue circle fit Ocal outer shape and the center mark on the primary mirror is also correct centering. Uh, however, in some cases, the center mark on the primary mirror is not able to prove, is not able to perfect centering. That's because some telescope makers made a flaw on the center mark. We will explain how to do in the addendum. So basically everything needs to be concentric. Crosshair and spider veins are overlapped. Blue circle and ocal are concentric. Let's turn on our blue circle. And it just seems like it's off a tiny bit. But 
where it seems like, see, if I jiggle, if I move the, um, no, I'm, I'm touching the, the whole focus or body itself. And you can see that little dot moving. So I think the whole focuser itself would need to be fixed as well. But I just don't. Now if you look at the dark circle on the collimator and the red center circle should line up. Exactly. So I feel that um, I may have done my best with an artificial light. Our, our, our C's, you have to adjust the focuser, the primary, and then the secondary. I think it was, I thought I, what I was reading before was... Um, oh, with, look, uh, there's a red dot where my pointer should be. Like the screen, so Estro knows what the heck we're looking at. What's that? So I was watching Alan Mitchell, and he was talking about the. Um, so here's his example of. Oh wait, hang on. you guys are pointing at things. Sorry, something over here. Where it is aligning, like getting that primary mirror aligned and then and then everything else is just adjusting the secondary to match up and then you're um, and then utilizing the um, so you get primary mirror and then he, later on I think he adjusted the um, Yeah, correcting the focuser. So it's like, wait, it's like. Uh, so the pointer is on the light and dark on the mirror is just the shape of the light he's using. Yeah, so this is. I wonder if it's also. Hmm. See, here's where going back and forth. Do I ins do I add the um, the twenty five millimeter ring? But I feel like everything is almost almost there. Yes. Yeah, decrease the intensity of the of the light for a second. All right, that exposure is a little too long. Turn these off. How hard is it to adjust the prime? It doesn't seem that difficult. Uh, to be fair, it's it's more finding these um, these points that we want to hit. Because that looks all nice, but it's just up here. That doesn't seem right. I want to see if I can close this this gap. So I want to adjust. So I should be adjusting this screw.
Like, I may have, like, totally biffed it as well, you know? That's the thing. Yeah, because, see, now... It may actually be... Like, what else could it be? You know? If, if, if there's a way that I could get this actually to screw in to here, that would be better. It's like it could even just be that the, the camera itself isn't properly aligned. Okay, I want to try something out because I feel like we were like, it's like super close. Can I? See, rotating everything, it doesn't seem like it's that far off. It's it actually may not be that bad. Okay, clamping that down actually mucks things up. What I want to know is can I take this part off? Can this be unscrewed? Well, that doesn't seem large enough. Hang on. Red ring is secondary, yes. But I'm going to, I'm going to try something. Need to check something out. Will this unscrew, does this unscrew at all? It doesn't. Uh, red ring is secondary, yes. I think, oh boy, this is because there isn't a there isn't instructions exactly for an RC. Now let's do this. One more option. Okay, I'm going to show you what uh, what we're doing. 
what's happening. Because I've seen more people do it like this. I probably... It'd be funny if this actually works. Yes. These, um, So that's, that's the, it's the, uh, it's working on the three axes that I honestly, I am having a, a bit of a time with. Okay. I don't know if this helps. This is, it probably hasn't probably done anything else. It's just like a secondary on your SCT, but with two mirrors. Yeah. Now you see, even, even adjusting this. You can see how much off, much rotation there is. I hope you get to see Venus and Jupiter tonight right next to each other. Um, for me, unfortunately, that is going to be very... That's going to prove fairly difficult. Sorry. So this, for some reason, this gap does not close at all. So if we wanted to move in this direction, I'd want to move. So you screw directly opposite, uh, you want the mirror to move. So this is... My soft robot. Hello there. How are you doing? Welcome. Welcome. We are just adjusting, well, attempting to adjust the collimation on my, on my telescope. 
Uh, is it worth cleaning the mirror or too dodgy? No, it would be... We wouldn't want to be cleaning the mirror. Um, you can get rid of all those artifacts with um, taking your flat frames where you have a, a white light and maybe a t-shirt draped over top of the, the telescope. Now the mirror, a dirty mirror isn't actually that bad because you can subtract that data. It's um, even certain, te like there's a, which tel telescope is, is it the hooker telescope that has uh, bullet holes in it? And it still works out. Is your chat set to delay? Negative. No, there's a, you can see when you chat in the, in the message and it pops up down the bottom of the screen, that is about as much delay as you get. Sometimes, re yes, refreshing the browser will help. Because Twitch can be delayed. You know, if maybe, um, yeah, you want to turn it to. Um, maybe a lower resolution, perhaps. Uh, Harlan J. Smith Telescope at the McDonald McDonald Observatory. There you go. Exactly. And we're not looking to, um, to put any bullets in the telescope today. Although if it does cheese me off. All right. Maybe, hang on a second. Let's see if this helps. Yeah, Twitch likes to be right next to your router. It, it, it just depends on what kind of um, delays you have in your in your browser. Or let's turn off this red red and blue circle for a moment because then we're we're jumping too far ahead. I feel like things are like fairly, be fairly close. All right. Now, let's see if we can start moving this one. Is this the one I want to adjust? See the tube. Yes. Are you seeing on this side it's fuzzier? My eyes. What's going on, Grand Admiral Quack? How are you? I uh, try to get that concentric with the secondary obstruction. And just secondary as needed. So it has nothing to do with this. No, that is. Yeah, that looks like the mirror. Look at that. That that that's a gap. I need to get that thing over.
So yes, Grand Admiral Quack, good to see you in here. Um, right now what we're doing, because last night, if you may have been in the stream, um, we had the telescope set up, but it wasn't giving us as good of an image as I thought it should. So I am attempting to make sure this is... Uh... Yeah, it, it's... Um, let's, let's see if we can get things moving around a little better. Remember hearing this? Yeah, this is a bit of surgery. With a new device that um, is meant to help with collimating, with aligning your mirrors in a telescope. And my soft robot, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you so much for joining the observatory today. This is a little bit of a, a little bit of a deviation from what we usually do. Usually we're aiming to take live images of outer space, however, um, things like this are necessary evils. Well, not even necessary evil is just necessary to do for, um, for making sure your telescope is a good working order. And sometimes when you really try to make sure that your telescope is in great working order, it ends up taking a long time. This takes incredible patience, which you guys know, sometimes I can be, sh I can be short on. in the sense of um, I just want things to be right. I just want things to work how they should. And sometimes, you know, no, it just, uh, it may require different tools for the job. Tools that I may not be too familiar with. Yeah, you see, like, these are all over the place. Oh, I'm sorry. Peas and rice. I'm on the wrong scene. You're thinking of the song Anticipation. I am. I, I'm. A, I'm thinking of like the song that never ends, or this is the collimation that never ends. It just doesn't look right to me. Like I'm not even seeing. Like, even this doesn't look. I always want to get a smaller mounted telescope you can take inside when you're done, but I always get scared it would be super sensitive. It's, um, you see, now we have this big gap over here. Yeah, get a, get a refractor. With whatever has been going on with this, um, my goodness, the, the headaches that could be avoided if we were to um, get a refractor. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're ready to wipe the sweat. <laughs> no, you know what? This is the thing. It's um, I, this. I, nothing different would be happening if I was. Um, if I was even doing this on my own. All right, maybe we want to close this gap up in the corner. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. It was, um, It was interesting. Put 
this way. We're gonna get this right. See, I'm thinking about how much is, uh, how much you have to twist and adjust the mirror. I feel like I'm, I'm just doing more, more harm than good on this thing. Like I thought maybe at one point we had uh, it looked pretty it looked all right but like even the the secondary mirror looks way off. No, there are a bunch of, there are different telescopes that you can, like, there are desktop telescopes that would, uh, if you're just kind of looking for something quick and easy to take in. Things like a, um, like Star Adventurers, little, uh, little portable Star Tracker mount are, are, are very decent for grab and go if that's what you want. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I see now we're getting... Not the concentric rings. See, I don't want to offset the... I don't really want to use this offset. Because hmm. that impacts like the entire collimation because I'd be offsetting it to how to how much this is tilted. Hello several Kit Kats, how are you doing tonight? Welcome, welcome, good to see you. Uh, doing fairly well. Doing. Uh, are, are you experiencing the double slit experiment? Yes, everything that's happening right is occurring just before I actually try to make anything happen. Until I actually start taking a picture of the sky. Hello, kid. This you is uh, this could also be. Ask me a question. This could be this could be attributed as um, as Schrodinger's collimation. Swafbon, hello, how are you doing? Page one sixty nine. Nice. All right, but holy potatoes. All right, let's uh, let's avert eyes from this for just a moment. So, page one hundred sixty nine from Tim Peake's Ask an Astronaut. How are you doing tonight, Swafbon? Hope you're having a, a good weekend. So, do you stay warm when it's so... How do you stay warm when it's so cold in space? Objects in space can fluctuate between being extremely hot and extremely cold. And that's a serious challenge, not only for our spacesuits, but also anything else that has to endure such harsh thermal extremes. When talking about temperature in space, it's important to realize that we are not talking about the air temperature as we do on Earth. That's because there's no air in the vacuum of space. 
Without air, there's no convection, and so our spacesuits have to deal with heat transferred by conduction, for example, when astronauts touch a part of the space station, or by radiation. The hot plasma of the sun emits photons of energy, some which are, which are absorbed by objects in space, warming them up, and at the same time, photons are continuously radiating away from any object that has a temperature above absolute zero. This perpetual balance for receiving and emitting photons will determine the object's temperature. For instance, a piece of, of bare metal exposed to a direct sunlight outside a space station can get as hot as 260 degrees Celsius. However, an object in the shade can be colder than minus 100 degrees Celsius. The space station comprises of many elements, with each with different thermal properties and experiencing different levels of, ex of exposure to the sun. During a spacewalk, astronauts will inevitably touch objects at varying temperatures, and their gloves have to deal with these thermal extremes. To compensate for these temperature extremes, a spacesuit is designed with, a, with multiple layers of material that provide insulation from heat loss from your body and heat gain from the sun, called multi-layer insulation, or MLI. This material is in fact used extensively outside the space station in an attempt to suppress temperature variations and protect sensitive pieces of equipment. The space suit is so good at, uh, at insulating against both the heat and the cold that during my spacewalk, I only needed to adjust my temperature twice in nearly five hours. So how do you stay warm out in space? Well, we rely on the body's own heat. During a spacewalk, you're working pretty hard, generating plenty of body heat and trying not to sweat. This body heat is sufficient, is sufficient to keep you warm with the exception of your fingers, which can sometimes get a bit cold. To protect against this, our gloves have electrical heaters that warm the fingertips when activated. Each time we approach sunset, Mission Control warn us so that we can switch on our glove heaters. With the body generating all of this heat and the spacecraft trapping it so, so effectively, uh, an equally tough challenge is how do you keep cool in space? So thank you very much, Swathbun, for page 169 in our book. There we go. Thank you very much. Page 169. I'll go back to that. Uh, doing all right. Um, definitely need to uh, almost go back to the drawing board. There we go, page 169. For all time, in the book, Tim Peake, Ask an Astronaut. All right. So we are utilizing this tool, the uh, the Ocal electric, Electronic Collimator. And I got to say, it has been a tough time recognizing where and what it is that we need to what are our points we have to hit because for some reason the inside of my telescope does not look like the inside of the telescopes given in the examples and i know that mine isn't special it's the same gso brand telescope just rebranded with altair astro so why why does it just not look the same on the inside? Like I'm looking at this and it just isn't. It's just not looking the same as. Uh... Let's see. Uh, the vacuum of space is not a vacuum because of heat loss. There must be something in the vacuum of space uh, that sinks heat from the astronaut's body. Well, they are the the your body would attempt to reach equilibrium with the three degree temperature of the universe, and that's what's happening with their their spacesuits, where they're attempting to uh, to avoid any heat loss occurring.
He was also my um, my source of light. It needs to be more diffuse. So I feel like we're almost there with everything else. Looks like every, all the other rings look nice and concentric. You know, like we're looking, like zooming in. Like many of this, much of this looks um, fairly even, save for up here. So we gotta, so why don't you just adjust things a little more. Well, space isn't really empty. There is gas and dust and uh, and debris floating around in space, and those can impact things as well. All right, we need to bring this over. Now we want to move that side up. Hopefully this is where we need to go. What's the black ring around the edge of the primary? I don't know. It seems that every time I try to uh, to get that to move, see, I'm looking at these three outer rings right now. These three small rings. I'm trying not to be too concerned about what we're seeing with this dark ring around the primary. And I'm hoping, perhaps, we can do this. Uh, sorry, I had to leave after your last comment, as your wife demanded an immediate audience. Boop. No worries, Gandalf. It's all right. It's all good. You know what? We're... We are attempting to be victorious. I do not want to let this... thing defeat me. This telescope to work right. I feel like I'm using I'm using the wrong key. I can man this this bolt is loose. Matthew, hello, how are you? <clears throat> In your heat transfer class, you notice that it takes material to transfer heat or electricity. Therefore, space must be made of a material that passes light. Gas window, glass windows and glass lenses pass light. Space vacuum must be an unknown material. Well, I gotta say, my, uh, my experience in, in, in thermodynamics is not as up to snuff as some people may be. I 
Uh, it was related. She needed her refractor collimated as well. No, no, it, it was, I was using the wrong size Allen key in the, in the hole. So it seemed a little, a little loose. All right, overall, these rings around the outside. They're almost there, but it's like, oh, it's, it's. <laughs> Rot row. It's... All right, I'm going to clamp those ones down. I'm going to say that, that is. And this is I I did just realize about the click on the stream thing. What does it do? If you're on a PC, you can quite literally click on the screen and I can see where you're pointing. So if there are, it's useful, especially when there are things like um, certain objects in space that we're looking at with images. That if there is something that you see that's interesting, you want to know a little bit more about it. You can see what it is you're looking at. All right, so now we see that the, I guess the secondary is way off. Let's, uh... Actually, it's not way off. It's only a tiny bit off. Uh, you have faith that momentum, uh, mass times speed operates like a turbine engine that processes unknown matter, unknown materials, unknown. Getting like way. I don't know. I'm just gonna say that um, this is probably as close as I'm gonna get it. Like even the spider veins look pretty good. Like that's that's not too bad right now. Maybe it also is my light source. I'm gonna have to take this thing outside. That's looking much better than it was at the beginning. These are all concentric. This is looking actually sugar lumps. That's looking way better. Uh, 
Uh, primary primary might need a little more tweaking. The focuser tube should be should be centered. And like if I had like a larger um, larger light source, and then we could say. Either way, how that looks. Probably, or even, um, I have to get like another monitor. All right, so <laughs> there has been, my goodness, three and a half hours with this. Oh my gosh. All right, I, I, I really hope. Like this, this does look way better than um, than before. Like almost everything is is well is is lined up. Like he like it seems like we have some fairly fairly concentric rings happening here, and I'm happy with that. <clears throat> it has been interesting for me. Not sure about everyone else. I mean, it's it's, it's a bit of a different in uh, topic, uh, but still, oh, sorry, a different. Uh, subject or topic. Anyway, it's still having to do with telescopes, um, but also every what has to go on behind the scenes of how this works. Um, I mean, I would like there to be a more definitive video I can put together for the uh, for the collimator when the time comes. But I'm gonna I'm still gonna spend more time with it. Um, we'll do a. I'll aim to try to do a star test with. Um, with some aluminum foil and uh, one of our lights to see if I can defocus on the on the target and see what we can what we can afford. Uh, seeing how collimation works on other scopes before you buy buy one is always nice. Like, that's what I aimed to show with this. And that was the whole point of why I was hoping that we could um, that I could acquire this tool and see how well it works on my telescope. And I guess the next, um, I mean, this looks super duper close. Like, I think that is almost as, as bang on as I've ever gotten it so far. So hopefully that's going to translate into some better images as to last time we were, um, we're looking at that. It'd be good for the app to give you feedback. And there, see, you can also utilize this on the mobile phone as well. Um, I, I will kind of play around with that because it was getting this sorted out if every camera is registered and every camera is going to have a different focal uh, adjustment so it knows where the, the crosshair should be placed um that's been done that's all corrected so i'm gonna let's i don't know what saving this configuration does but it it looks a far cry better than uh If it would have been cheap enough to send you and loan you your artificial star, you would have, but shipping is bonkers at the moment. <clears throat> no, a, no, no worries, Third Rock. I appreciate it. I will. Um, I think I've seen that um, there are a couple of nearby places that do have the artificial stars. Or like I said, I'll put a, uh, a pinhole foil on a, on a torch. And I could probably set it up in the field and then uh, look out to get that sorted. No, it's um, this it, it's going to be a series. It's not going to be just a complete one off of everything that we're doing with the um, with the Ocal electronic collimator. It is going to be multiple uh, tries with this. And hopefully the next clear night that we have looks like it's going to be Friday. It's possibly the next time we're going to have some clear skies. However, um, I don't need to get like the entire rig set up again to make sure that we are um, we're going to be imaging. The next session we're going to be imaging is just to be able to see how this is going to look with a star, um, barring if not being able to get an artificial star working for us. So, yeah, I, I want to be able to give an honest opinion on this tool. I think an RC scope, as great as they can be for imaging, it is very, 
it's not so much that it's difficult, it's time consuming. Getting a uh, getting these mirrors properly aligned and knowing what to look for. And no, I don't know exactly what to look for. So when I do, when I do get that together, um, then I can say, here is what you're looking for in your telescope. Uh, you own one, uh, one the same for your Schmidt Cassegrain. 110 in stock. Now, who had, I believe it may have been another, um, another shop that had the artificial star. Yeah, there was, um, this one, Hubble Optics, five star artificial star. So that's not, it's not too bad. 32 Canadian be worth, uh, giving it a go. Ah, yours is just a single star. All right. All right. So why why is all this? Why do we make, need to make sure that this telescope is in peak performance? Uh, because we're working toward a goal. We're working toward our goal of the ASI 533mm Pro. This is our monochrome counterpart to the color camera that we utilize to show our images of outer space. And, you know, I, I, I thank everybody very much for the contributions that have been made or, for throughout this the, the stretch goal that we're um, that we're working toward um, tomorrow morning we're going to be back with our lazy Sunday Lego stream and what set we're going to be constructing I think I'm going to what do we got? it's going to be a one day build and actually you know, I'm going to show you what we're going to be building tomorrow because we have two two Lego streams that are going to be coming up in the um, this week so tomorrow um, oh, you're just the, the single star. Tomorrow, we're going to build the creator three in one, either the space shuttle or the Saturn V or the lunar lander. The whatever one we build, the first one is going to be up to chat. We'll put a poll up um, in the morning, and actually, I'll probably put one on Discord as well so you can join in on on the uh, the options. So there we go on the smaller screen as well. So we're going to be building this. Much, much smaller version of everything that we have built the space shuttle, we have built the Saturn V and the lunar lander. I do like the incremental sizes that are available. So and also I do have the, 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 the harebrained scheme that yes, eventually would just buy two more of these sets and build the the all three of them. So they can be on display because that's what you do with Lego, right? And then if we do if we do hit a, uh, a sub goal before before May the fourth, you know, we're gonna we will reveal what that build is going to be. And actually, we might even change what that build is if we reach this goal as well. So so we do have a bonus Lego stream coming up on Wednesday. Um, Actually, possibly even might do, to my mind, maybe even do a bit of a giveaway. We'll see. Because it is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And we'll have some fun with a early evening stream. Uh, is it the speeder of Luke's? That is a very good question. No. It may or may not be the land speeder. Now, keeping in mind tonight at midnight, um, or at least I know for, for, for my time, Eastern time, um, we are, I am going to be jumping onto Lego's website. Like I said, um, I want to make sure that I'm finished before <laughs> midnight so that we can, there are some orders I want to place. And there are, luckily enough, there's a lot of the Lego sets that I haven't purchased before that are vi of that are viable for the double t double VIP points. So, try and use as many points as we can to maximize on how much 
Lego is purchased and like actually, um, you know, bring some other builds and just have some fun with what we do. I love, I love building Lego and I, I enjoy the, the, the Sunday morning streams. Um, uh, thank you for sharing the colonoscopy with us. It has brought us closer together. We have peered down the holes of the telescopes together. I <laughs> uh, do you think stuff will be sold out at midnight. Probably not. However, I would just rather get my order in and that way, like I've had the, I haven't have these, I've had the items sitting in my basket ready to go. So um, I know they're not going to arrive before the fourth. That's fine. That's it'll be for for some future um, Lego streams. There's always going to be some kind of Star Wars thing we can we can build up to. But that is going to be for well for a little later on. But tomorrow morning we will be back building our three in one creator set for either the space shuttle or the Saturn V. Or the Lunar Lander. That's going to be up to chat. I'll put the, the vote out in the Discord in a little bit. Um, and then ultimately, who, who, if you're joining on the stream, in the first hour, you got a chance to vote on what we're going to build. And I think it'll be kind of fun. It'll be very fun. And also for the fact is I don't really have to add any other chat commands because um, this does something which is related. Um, this does something related to the build. And this does something related to the build. So I already have the chat commands ready for tomorrow while we're chatting about our Lego build. Astro Caleb, what's going on? Excuse me. Jeb. Jeb is going to be stuck out in space. He's gonna have to wait a little longer. We we spent the the entire stream trying to get this this lovely telescope, this non-refractor telescope. I do the I do the hard stuff, so you guys can enjoy your refractors. <laughs> and then the drop game will be on. So this is looking. Excuse me. There you go. That's looking pretty damn good. I'm happy with that. Um, the, it's just now just a matter of time of uh, a matter of waiting for some clear skies and then see if it looks better than it did yesterday, because the imaging that we did yesterday was not it wasn't great. I feel that there is a huge a huge difference in the image. It just everything seemed really soft. I wasn't happy with how the um, how the images were turning out versus like the night prior, and just everything was that little bit sharper. So these are these are the things that we need to take into consideration, and also how much can I sell this RC scope for to put toward a refractor. But uh, also those who were in last night, this was the result of the Seahorse Nebula, this dark nebula in uh, amid the, the larger field of stars. Didn't add too much more time on this, but at least we started to get the shape. Because overall it was, everything was just way too soft. Although this star didn't look too bad. But things could have been better. So, like I said, this is an ongoing series of time spent with the Ocal electronic collimator. Uh, we're using the pro version, does come with a couple extra little bits and bobs. And I will also do a little bit of a demonstration on how the mobile app works. So we'll, uh, we'll add that into the video as well. But once I do my, my complete live review, when I get my, my for my final opinions, we're gonna do that live on stream with all the um, our findings and how well it's gone. We will be doing a giveaway for a $50 gift gift certificate, $50 Canadian to Ontario Telescope and Accessories, uh, from whom we, we have received this bit of kit from. So, and I have also told them that, yes, this is gonna be an honest review. There's, you know, it, it's, it's on loan. I, I wanted to be able to try it and give my opinion. And so 
so far, so far, I, I'm, I'm still positive about this. I think it is just more instructions that need to come along, uh, especially even with, with an RSC scope, because I think a lot of people are intimidated by the collimation requirements for one of these telescopes. Um, and I don't want to be one of those people anymore. I would like to be able to say, here is how you got to do it. Here's what you're going to spend. Here is what is uh, going to net you the best results. And would I recommend this collimating tool or not? So we will keep you posted on how that is all going to progress. So let us see. Who do we have on to this evening? Who is doing some cool things? Who can we say hello to? All right. Here is okay. Here's a, an opportunity. I would like to go join in with Loyal Moses for his streamer appreciation day because it is uh, he does some really cool 3D printing. And if you're into 3D printing, you do want to go check out Loyal Moses. He has done some incredible work and has built an amazing community as well. <clears throat> so if you do, if you would like to join in on the raid with us today, as we go over and say hello to Loyal Moses, that is our raid call. For those who are subscribed, you get the holy potatoes. If you are not subscribed to the channel, do not worry. I hold it not against you not. You have Carl Sagan in our pale blue dot. <clears throat> we are, like I said, I'll drop the uh, information on Discord of what you want to do for uh, for tomorrow's build. And... Other updates are going to come on Twitter. I usually would say uh, go check out Instagram for some interesting images, but Instagram is changing up their algorithm a bit. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's more focused on video, and I am not looking to do video. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> Improvised Dynamics! Can we get a shout out for Improvised Dynamics? How you doing? How quickly? Oh my goodness, how is your stream? I apologize, we are just we are just ending. I'm sorry. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Raiders. Welcome. Uh, we got like 30 seconds. My name is Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. I love to share images of outer space, and tonight we are working on fixing my telescope. I really hope it went well. Oh boy. Hopefully, hopefully so. Um, if you haven't been following Improvised Dynamics, go drop them a follow fresh on the scene with Twitch. And um, we're going to go check out some 3D printing action with Loyal Moses. Doing a little bit of streaming appreciation day as well. So let's go say hello. Drop the raid calls in. As always, <clears throat> I've been Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to share the universe. Have a very good evening, a very good morning, a very good night, wherever you are. And we will see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., for some Lazy Sunday Lego. Take care. <laughs>